James Gunn has announced his DCU slate, and in today's video, we're going to be ranking all 10 of these projects from what I'm most excited for and what I'm least excited for. Now, understand this is my opinion. I don't know everything about these teams, so if there's some comics that I absolutely should read to get invested in these, please let me know down below in the comments. Leave your ranking as well. Again, hit that like and subscribe button, as well as just as a heads up, while James Gunn has kind of much talked about that, that, yeah, there might be an Aquaman 3, yeah, Blue Beetle might be in this world, it seems like that's a little bit more definitive. Same with kind of the future of Wonder Woman, Shazam, and Flash. Those are things that we still have questions on, so I won't be including any of these. We will just basically be talking about the 10 projects that James Gunn just announced for his Chapter 1 Gods and Monsters. So without further ado, let's dive into this. My number 10 is The Authority. This is the one team that I did not even know was a thing until today. And what reading and looking into it, it's James Gunn's big passion project. This is probably going to be the film that he honestly directs. Probably going to be the next script that he writes after Superman. And overall, looking into this, I like it. But for me, I, there's just no way in frame of me having any nostalgia, nor much excitement, because I just don't know much about these characters, this team at all. I think it could be a unique thing, and I'm interested to see how they segue it into the entire DC universe, but I'm actually going to need some definitive parts of what is the story, what characters are in this one, because it seems like this is a vastly wide-ranging ability of stuff that they could easily throw into here, and there's just not enough information on this one yet. My number nine now is the new Supergirl movie. Now, I did just buy the comic book that this one is based off of. I'm very interested to say the least because of after what James Gunn has said about this, it seems like everything that I've read about what this comic is about is that this Supergirl is vastly different than any show movie or cartoon that we've ever seen her appear in before so i'm very interested to read the comic book i think once i read that i'll probably bump this up a little bit higher on this ranking but overall i've never been the biggest supergirl fan so i'm hoping that this comic book does intrigue me to be even more excited about the movie my number eight is booster gold i mean who is not excited for booster gold maybe you've just never read about any of his comics or really been introduced to him before i've always been a pretty big fan of this character and i think the imposter syndrome that james gunn mentions in his entire kind of announcement gets me very excited for what is possible here what characters could show up specifically a blue beetle that could personally tie into booster gold and everything there's a lot of fun elements here and i think booster gold is a great first pick into this first chapter and i'm happy it's going to be a show because that means we can really dive into this one character who has a lot of backstory at my number seven is the amanda waller show with viola davis coming back we know that one is confirmed very interested to see how this is because we also know that we are getting a Peacemaker season two, which has officially been delayed, but this will take place in between seasons one and two and be that in between story. I'm very interested to see how this goes. Uh, I love Viola Davis. She's stellar in the role as Amanda Waller. Like she was born to play it, but I'm just interested to see what the actual story will be from her perspective. Cause for the most part, she's just been a side character. So this is going to be interesting to see what they do with her. But if it's more suicide squad shenanigans and things like that within peacemaker, I loved the last Suicide Squad movie, and I loved Peacemaker, so bring it on. At my number six is Paradise Lost, the brand new Themyscira Game of Thrones type show coming to HBO Max. Now, they have announced that there will be no Wonder Woman. It takes place before her birth, so that's kind of interesting to me. But what I'm most interested to see is what lore they actually bring about within Themyscira on this show. Because that is the thing that intrigues me the most, is while we haven't seen a lot of, like, the monsters and creatures that Wonder Woman has battled in the comics, this is something that I think we could see in this show and maybe give us a grandos introduction to some of the mythology of Wonder Woman that the movies have actually never touched on. Me now to my number five, which is Creature Commandos. Now I'm gonna be flat out honest. Before today, I had no idea what this was about. I had no idea. I got the slate early yesterday and, or the day before this was announced and I went and go, went, okay, this is weird. And then I started looking into it more and I became obsessed with Creature Commandos. Like I want to read Every single comic book, Weasel's coming back, Rick Flagg Sr. is going to be in it. It just seems like kind of the spiritual sequel to the Suicide Squad that I just need in my life right now. If anything is to be known from the concept art they showed, this is going to be an R-rated animated show that some of these characters will start to reflect into live action. I can't wait to see how they actually dip, dip and dive into all that, but seriously enough, Creature Commando seems right up my alley, and I I love it. At my number four now is the Green Lantern Show. Now, the reason that this one's only at my number four is because, personally, I would have actually liked a movie instead of a show. Now, don't get me wrong. I know they're going to give the budget to this. I'm so happy we're getting Hal and, of course, Jon Stewart in the same show. They're saying it's going to have a true detective vibe, which is actually kind of wild because, it, in a way, I guess the Green Lantern are space cops. 
All of that sounds exciting to me, but I really wanted a movie. And maybe that's just a personal thing. I do not like that Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. I just want the Green Lanterns to be represented in the best manner in a movie. And if the first step is just giving them a show, then sure, give me it. Make it grand. Make it awesome. I hope it is great because I would love it to all pieces. But the reason I'm just a little bit less excited for this is because it's a show. I, I really wanted this one to be a movie, but still... Surprise me as you will. This is my most anticipated show that they provided. But now my number three is Superman Legacy. Now, don't get me wrong. James Gunn writing a Superman movie, that's awesome. We're getting a younger Superman, that's cool. But I don't know the story here. I don't know really much the villain. I don't know who's going to be Superman. And I'm still a little bit burned that it's not going to be Henry Cavill. And, that, and that's just me being honest. I love Henry in the role. I think he is personally my favorite embodiment of Superman. I've always loved the cartoon versions of Superman, whether it's Justice League or Justice League Unlimited. But when it comes down to the comics, I never truly got into him unless it was Elseworlds stories. So I'm very much hoping that this movie gives me the same feelings and dynamics that Henry Cavill's Superman very much proved to me but it's really, we're going to have to wait and see on this one. And we'll have to wait and see, but this will be the first start to chapter one of all the entire movies in this new, brand new DCU slate. I'm also very curious to see who they get to be a director. Kind of fingers crossed on Joseph Kaczynski. What I will say is that even though it is taking place as a younger Superman, I'm interested to see how he balances his life as being a reporter as well as his Kryptonian powers. But again... Lots of questions in the air for this one. At my number two now, though, is Swamp Thing. I've always been fascinated with the horror aspects of whether it's Marvel or DC. And we saw Marvel finally dive into the horror aspects last year with Werewolf by Night. And DC is going to be dipping in their toes in with, of course, Creature Commando. But specifically, movie format, we're getting a Swamp Thing film, which is awesome. You, I would love a main goal directing this, Del Toro. You name it, I would love it. Because there's so many different directors that could really tackle the heartbreak this of Swamp Thing and I'm very excited to finally go back and read like the Alan Moore run. I've always read the older runs but the Swamp Thing show that we got with like producer James Wan was spectacular and I'm very excited to see what they were able to do in this movie. They did say it's gonna be a horror film so bring it on. My most anticipated film of this entire James Gunn DCU slate is The Brave and the Bold. The brand new Batman film coming in here and yes we're still gonna have Robert Pattinson in his Elseworld film. That's still gonna be my most anticipated Batman film no matter what but the fact that this is introducing Damian Wayne, who's my least favorite Robin, but I kind of proved that maybe this will be a great adaption. I love that they're starting out with this. I think a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of it, but what it introduces and what it intrigues me with is that the rest of the Bat family, I have a feeling will be in this film, whether it's a Nightwing, whether it's a Batgirl, maybe even a Red Hood, all characters that I am absolutely in love with. And if this is your way to kind of introduce and say, here's these characters, they've been in this world, they're already established, this is the story we're taking, bring it on. I am very excited to see what they can do. I'm also very nervous. Again, the word that I can truly say is bring it on. I just want some goddamn hope in the DC universe. In my ranking of all 10 projects that James Gunn announced today, he did say that there are going to be more, so we will definitely continue to cover that as they premiere out or news comes out. That's what we love doing on this channel is talking movies and TV on a daily basis. So I do appreciate you guys clicking on this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.